the different teams that we have at the church. And for those of you who have not registered for Pioneer Girls Conference, we'll be outside at the end of service for you all to register at the table. Um, who's being changed by the message that we've been having each yeah. Sunday? Yeah. And it's all things new. Has he been making anything new in your life? Yeah. So at this time, we'll have Pastor Sosa. Yeah. Amen. 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 It's so good to stand before you this morning. I needed that fire that God just gave us to stay awake and be awake this morning. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was in between. And I don't know if I was in the flesh or in the spirit. <laughs> Until the fire, the fire session. Amen. Amen. <laughs> bless God, bless God. God is good. God is doing a new thing in the house. Amen. He's doing a new thing with the Pioneer Girls Conference. It's been moved to a bigger location. That's a new thing. It's the first time we're going to be doing it in a new place. Um, and it's going to be big this year. So um, we have just 10 slots open for the VIP mentorship session. If you want one-on-one -on -one mentorship with Dr. Faye, there's just 10 slots open. And then um, the open um, sessions are going fast, please register and join us. Uh, for those of us who are joining us for the first time this month, we are on a series, It Makes All Things New. And we are working with God and learning how God transforms and restores and makes things new in our lives. And um, last week, Dr. Faith did good justice to, to the word and she, um, the week before that, she talked about it, taught us how to how to observe or how to understand when something is about to happen and how to position yourself as something that's coming up, right? Um, how many of us know that you need to be in an expectant mood? You need to be able to understand and observe and expect something new for you to catch it just when it comes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. For some of us, something new, things, new things have been happening in our lives but because we cannot understand the shift. We don't see the shift. We're unable to apprehend what God is doing in our lives. And then last week she talked about the different ways God makes things new. And it renames. That yeah. is a beautiful thing, renaming. God gives you a new name, and with every name there's a purpose. With every name there's a destiny. And God renames us. And after he renames us, he restores. And she talks about how, she talked about how God restores and sometimes restores everything that you have lost, even with the cancer worms and, and the palmer worms and yeah. all the different types of worms and yeah. all the <laughs> brother worms and sister worms and, <laughs> you, know, you know, all of the worms in your lives and around you, all the worms, everything they've eaten, God restore them back to us. And so today we're going to be talking about how we partner with God in the renewal process. Because last week we were carried away by how God restores and, yeah. and we talked about how God can restore time and how we can restore things that we have lost. And you know, it's, it's so beautiful and cozy and I was taking lots of notes. I was like, <laughs> this sounds so cool, you know? And then you, you have to, at some point you have to ask yourself, what is your part in the renewal process, yeah. right? You gotta, you gotta be a partner with God. Mm -hmm. And so today we're gonna be talking about just the simple concept concept of regeneration and renewal. Come on. Regeneration and renewal. I mean, you of us know there's a difference between regeneration and renewal. Amen. Regeneration and renewal. God regenerates. We renew. Mm. God regenerates. We renew. God does not renew you. I mean, He can, but that's your responsibility. Come on. God regenerates yeah. you. And by regeneration, it's the experience you have at salvation. And when God comes and, you know, in the Kairos moment and sometimes still to you or whatever, and he just rocks your world and, and he brings you into the knowledge of Christ and you, you feel broken and you have that experience with God. One experience that you would never forget. I can tell you my salvation experience. Everybody should have that tangible experience that you can never forget. Amen. You have that experience. Scripture says that from that day on, all things are passed away. Yeah. The old, you are become new. Yeah. So you're a new man from then on, right? You all know that the new men will still live as though they are old men. Mm, yeah. Scripture says that you have to put off the old man yeah, and yeah. put on the new man. Yeah. So you giving your life to Christ and becoming a Christian does not mean that you're not living an old man. That's the problem in the church. The problem with Christianity. The problem with, with how we live. 
We, we cannot understand how we profess God. Yeah. How we obviously slave. Some of us lay hands on the sick and they, yeah. and they come to life. And, you know? Come on, come on. <laughs> but the old man is still with us. <laughs> and people, people, people complicate things. Mm -hmm. We don't understand how spiritual things work and how spiritual principles work. Yeah. God does not take the gift from you because you choose to live as an old man. He's not repentant about the gift he has given you. Those are your gifts. So you can operate in gifts. You can move in wonders. You can hold crusades and still live as an old man. But we're called to live as the new man. We're called to shed away the old man and be revived in our spirit man. The Greek word anakonoises from the word anakonoi Meaning to renew qualitatively, yeah. to renew qualitatively. Therefore, a renewal or a renovation which makes a person different from their past. Wow. Right? So we're talking about renewal and we're talking about regeneration. Yeah. Yeah. Regeneration speaks about spiritual rebirth. Mm. You know, when that, when that time when you were born again, yeah. you know, Jesus told, you know, um, Nicodemus that you have to, unless a man, you know, becomes born again. Yeah. And he asks, how can a man be born again? Will he need to go into his mother's womb to come again? Yeah. No, it, you have to be born by the spirit yeah. and of the word. Yeah. That process is almost instantaneous. Yeah. The process of regeneration is almost instantaneous. And so we take it for granted. We take salvation for granted because that experience and, and what scripture talks about, and it's almost instantaneous. Yeah. But renewal yeah. is the, is the God that part. That is, the, that is the sweet part. <laughs> Not so sweet part. Yeah. But that is the important part. Yeah. Or the more important part. In the old work of becoming new. Mm -hmm. Becoming a new man. Becoming a new man. You know our primary assignment after giving our lives to Christ. After you've believed. Some of us have believed for a long time. Decades you know. Others are new or in faith and all of that. But. One of our primary assignments, we have so many assignments, but some of them are more primary than others. Mm -hmm. You know, we, some of us, you know, we give our lives to Christ and we just, we want to run to the rest of the world to do missions and all of that. Scripture says that you gaze upon Him, you know, gaze upon Him so that you can become like Him. That's your primary assignment. Your primary assignment is not to be the next superstar. It's not to be the next whatever. To be like him. He has called you to be like him. 2 Corinthians 3.18 It says that, And we all, with unveiled faces, continually seen as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord. What are we seeing in the mirror? We, we are seen as, the, this, is, this is a metaphor, right? So you're looking in the mirror. But what you are seeing is the glory of the Lord. So what you are looking, even though you're looking at your life, is you are looking at the glory of the Lord in your life. Your eyes are fixed yeah. on what? What God is doing in your life. What God is precipitating yeah. in your life. Yeah. So we all who are unveiled with unveiled faces. And that, that's the key part there, unveiled faces. Sometimes we look with our faces veiled. Come on. You know, we don't look with the new eyes, with new yeah. lenses. Yeah. You know, we're, we're looking in the mirror, but we're seeing something different. You know, James um, said in, in the book of James that it, 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 some of us look in the mirror yeah. and then we forget. Yeah. We're not doers of the word of God. Yeah. So we look and it looks as though we're not seeing. Yeah. And then we walk away. Yeah. But scripture says this, he will look intently yeah. with a purpose to be transformed. Yeah. And so you move from the place of just looking to the place of acting to the place of doing yeah. and you become transformed into the image of God. So 2 Corinthians 3, 18 says that we all with unveiled faces continually seeing as in the mirror the glory of the Lord are progressively. That's the key word. Progressively. Progressively. And so when I see people rest on their oars as though they have arrived. As though they know everything there is to know about God. And I said there are no places, no new places of experience and nothing new for them in God. I'm very weary of people like that. Because you need to be consistently and progressively growing in God. You ain't looking at the right mirror if you, if you stop growing. You're not looking correctly with the right lenses if you feel like you've arrived. And that's where the spirit of pride comes in. 
Spirit of pride comes because you see, when you look at the mirror, all you see is, is you. You see that you've arrived. You see all the accolades. You see all of that. You feel like, hmm, can it be anything better? And being transformed into his image from one degree of glory. Yes, come on. <laughs> that version says that with an ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. My version here says that from one degree of glory, even more glory, which comes from the Lord. So there is glory and there is glory. And there is more glory and there is yet more glory. There is glory and there is glory and there is glory and there is glory. There is glory, there is glory. So when we come to Christ, when we vow our lives to Jesus, and spontaneously, and this is so this is so important. I don't want to belabor this point because we have a lot to cover, but I, I want to share this because sometimes I pause. I'm one of those people who pause and ask questions. Why do we have so many Christians, yet we live in a very untransformed world? Why do we have so many Christians that we have people who just sometimes they, they open their mouth and I wonder like you've been a Christian before I was born. How come that you, you just don't understand simple, basic stuff? Because people have not allowed the Holy Spirit to transform them. They don't allow, they don't grow in Christ. They are stagnated. And it's a thing of choice. It's not a thing of how long you've been in faith. It's a thing of choice. Ephesians 2, the whole book of Ephesians talking about the transformation. For some reason, Apostle Paul wrote several epistles, and in most of these, Apostle Paul is, I think, the only apostle who really, really talked about the work of regeneration in the sense that he did. Of course, everybody talked about, you know, being in Christ and loving God and transforming. But Apostle Paul used the word regeneration and the old concept of regeneration and taking off the old man and putting on the new man. He had a keen understanding of that revelation. He had a deeper understanding of the old man and the new man. And I wonder why is it so that Apostle Paul had that kind of revelation apart from the other apostles? And I would think that the other apostles spent three years with Jesus. So their lives were being transformed while they were with yeah, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. They didn't have the one moment interaction where they were hit by a light, lightning, right? Yeah, yeah. And they have to think, well, what do I do from here? Yeah. You know, what's the word? I mean, how do I pray? You know, these guys had an opportunity to interact with yeah, Jesus yeah. from a very early time. Yeah. And so their lives were even transformed even with them not knowing. Yeah. Because they fellowship with the Father. Yeah. Paul, on the other hand, was going about his business when the Lord encountered him, right? And so even though there was an encounter, even though there was this regeneration, even though there was this experience, from time to time, Paul would look at himself and he would understand that, you know, I know I'm a new man. But there's just things about me that I can't stand. I mean, so he was very, very acquainted with the old man. He didn't have the period of time over three years or you know three and a half years to to be gradually transformed and and to act and to lean on the master's shoulder and ask him you know jesus you know jesus what do you think about me he didn't have the luxury of that so he was very acquainted with with the old man and how distinct it is from the new man he had an imagery of what the new man is but looking at himself don't transform Though full with wisdom, though chosen as the, one of the apostles, he could still see that there was a difference between him, the old man, and the new man. And so he set a target for himself to be continuously and progressively transformed into the image of Christ. And so some of us turn believers or came to the knowledge of Christ in places where the emphasis was just to confess Jesus. You are saved. Glory be to God. Glory, glory. And we all saved in this place. Amen, amen, amen. Let me tell you something. I'm about to give you. <laughs> I got news for you. I got news for you. You just passed the test one. You are invited into the renewal process. This is the part where you turn and transform and begin to look like Jesus. 
this is the part where if you were standing by Jesus and somebody came to take you out, they would mistake you for Jesus. They probably take Jesus because they want to take you. Right now you're still looking very different. You're saved. I ain't trying to take your salvation from you. You're all saved. You confess Jesus, you're saved. But there's a, there's a, there's a transformation that needs to take place. When you become like Jesus. Scripture says that when they wanted to come to take Jesus out, they couldn't recognize Jesus apart from his disciples. That was because his disciples were transformed to look like him. They became new men without even knowing. That is what fellowshiping in the presence of God does to you. It transforms you. It transforms you. You're a new man. And this, that's the best way to be renewed. You're not even counting it. You know, some of us count, you know how many times you, you, you sleep? Sorry, when I didn't slip. You know, my tongue. When I don't sleep, <laughs> my tongue slips. <laughs> but, <laughs> but some of us, Count how many times we 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 fall into temptations and how many times we floor and we do all of this. But the best way to be transformed is not focus on the count. It's to focus on the image of the glory of the Father. It transforms you without you knowing. Things drop off of you without you knowing. You get awkward when you go in the midst of the people that you used to roll with. You think you still got a swag, right? Yeah. You go in there and all of a sudden you just they're talking and you're out of place. Yeah. Yeah. You're just like you're trying, but you're like you just yeah. you ain't trying to be holy, you just can't flow. Yeah. And you didn't recognize the transformation that has happened to you while you were communing with the Father. Yeah. That's the kind of transformation we've been called to. Yeah. It's not the one that we're trying to impress the world that we're transformed. Trying to tell the world how sinful they are and how holy we are. Trying to count how many times they are. That's not the kind of transformation we're talking about. It's a transformation that without you knowing, you are transformed. You look different. You look different. Regeneration is a one-time thing. Transformation is a progressive thing. Titus 3.5 says, he saved us not because of any works of righteousness that we have done, but because of his own compassion and mercy by the cleansing of the new birth, spiritual transformation, regeneration, and the renewing by the Holy Spirit. Note, it says what he cleansed us. He saved us by two things, right? The first thing was what? By the cleansing, right? Of what? Word. Cleansing, the transformation, the regen regeneration, salvation, new birth, right? New birth. That's the point when you're cleansed. Mm -hmm. But it says, in addition, yeah. by the renewing yeah. of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And so you cannot take the Holy Spirit out of the equation. Yeah. You cannot take the, isolate the Holy Spirit from the renewal process. And the reason why sometimes it's so hard for us to do it is because we are trying to do it in our own strength. Yeah. We're trying to please God in our own strength. We're trying to move in our flesh. We believe, and some of us are so, sometimes we are so committed, sometimes we're so resolved, we're so resolute, but we're doing it in our strength. Scripture says that we're renewed by the Holy Spirit. And so you cannot be renewed without the Holy Spirit. So if you find a brother in faith who believes in the rules, and the laws and things that they have to do to be holy and be pious and they've totally removed all the spirit from the equation call them aside and just give them a, a, a word in love a correction in love now the Holy Spirit is the key to your renewal process the Holy Spirit is the key to your renewal process and interestingly God is so God is just wonderful it's awesome 
And this is the reason why I like the, the Bible in, in its complete form, the, the Old Testament and the New Testament. Because when you look at God, it is consistent, even though the expressions are different. If you look at the heart of God, it is consistent throughout all generations. If you look at Ezekiel 36, 25, when after he has chastised the children of Israelites, and he's bringing them back, he was giving them a promise of a return. The way he laid out the promise, and we're going to read Ezekiel 35, 36. We're going to read it, Ezekiel 36, from verse 25. And I thought this was really, really interesting because it symbolizes the whole process of salvation. Yeah. From the process of salvation to the process of baptism yeah. to the process of the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And I thought this was a taste, a foretaste, a foreshadow of what was to come. Yeah. Ezekiel 36, 25 says, Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you. And you shall be clean from all your filthiness. Yeah. The water, which is the word, represents the word. I will sprinkle it upon you. I'll make you clean. You know, I'll teach you a few things. I'll, you know, I'll clean you up. You know, clean all the filth away from you. And you will be turned away from all of your idols, which will I cleanse you, right? From all your idols will I cleanse you. It is that there. says, a new heart will I give to you. And a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. Now this is interesting because cleansing you enough alone is not enough to keep you in God. Yeah. That's why people have momentarily, or what I call relapse in faith. Mm -hmm. They go, they get this experience, you, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then they relapse. Because they were cleansed by the water. Yeah. But they didn't have, they didn't wait long enough yeah. to have a new heart, yeah. to have a new spirit. Yeah. They didn't have the driving force that continuously keeps them in the Father. Yeah. And so they have this experience that they come and they go in and out of faith. They go in and out of faith. Yeah. God says that I will not just cleanse you because I know that you need to be cleansed from your idols. I know that you need to turn from your evil ways. I will wash you clean. Yeah. But I'm not just going to leave you clean. I am going to take your heart, and in place of that, I'll give you a different heart. And in place of that, I'm going to give you a different spirit. What does, what does all that do? That is readying them for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now let's go and see the next verse. It says, and I will put my spirit inside of you. I mean, God is a designer. Watch the way it is transforming the whole nation. It started by cleaning them up. And then changing their heart, changing yeah. their spirit, getting them ready yeah. for the for the big thing. Yeah. For the big thing. And it's interesting that we kind of don't recognize the that the Holy Spirit has always existed, yeah. even in the Old Testament. Yeah. 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 And he always filled people up in the yeah. Old Testament. Yeah. The only difference was we didn't have it in the fullness of the form in which it was yeah. at Pentecost. Yeah. Right? Because Peter says, In the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Yeah. Right? But in the city of the 6.30, it says, And I will multiply the fruit of the tree and increase of the field, that you shall receive no more reproach or famine amongst the heathen. And this is the part that sometimes we as believers get really, really interested in. That is the new thing that is exciting to us. I mean, we talked about a new thing, we talked about new jobs, we talked about new naming, we talked about new opportunities, we talked about new destinies, we talked about new calling. All of those are beautiful things, right? Those are things that affect our outward man. Those are things that affect our pocket, as it were. Those are things that affect our prestige. Those are things that affect us in different ways. Before God does a new thing in your finances, I need to listen. Before God does a new thing in your outward man, now God bless us. I'm not saying that God doesn't bless. It's not the kind of God who we all do things from us, right? He lets the rain fall on the just and the unjust. So it's not like you're not going to have any blessing, right? But there is the kind of blessing that God announces to you before he comes, right? Yeah, that kind of blessing that I'm talking about, not the general blessing, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So the blessing that God announces that he's going to bring to you uh -huh. before that new thing happens, yeah, God transforms yeah, yeah. your inner man. Yeah, yeah. He seeks to do a new thing in your inner man yeah, yeah. first. 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 So you need to watch. Apart from when you want that new thing, 
that new name, that new experience, the kind of experience that Jacob had, the kind of experience that transforms your destiny, that moves you from just a smart, swindling guy to, to the patriarch of a whole nation. Before those kind of experiences, God is seeking to do the inner job in you. Can I change your heart? Can I change your spirit? Can I fill you up with my spirit? Can I step in and transform you to a different person first? Let us deal with the innermost things first. Let's deal with the inner man first. We've got enough time for the outward man. But we'd rather fast and pray for the outward man. Rather fast and pray for the increase of the fields yeah. and the increase of the trees yeah. And, yeah. and that no farming will come and God is I'm like God is saying, but I want your heart. Yeah. I want to see a new man from within spring forth. Yeah. I want to see you transformed from inside out. God is as interested in our regeneration process as he is in our renewal process. Mm -hmm is as interested in our generation process as it is with our renewal process. It's interesting that Apostle Paul correctly distinguishes between the old man and the new man. The old man is a man dead in sin. A man ruled by the delights of his flesh. By the convenience of his flesh. A man who in I find it very interesting that Apostle Paul did this contrast in so many places, in Colossians, in Ephesians, in Titus, kept teaching the early church, kept teaching the early church, that there is a difference between the new man and the old man. And he was the, 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 the apostle that was sent to the Gentiles, right? The other apostles were more concentrated on the Jews. And even though they lived with Jesus and spent time with Jesus, they still had very close connections with the Lord. And now you have to be circumcised, and now you have to still keep the traditions and all of that. But when Paul came on the scene, even though he was the chief, one of the chief Hebrews, says, I'm an Hebrew of the Hebrews, right? Even though he was circumcised on the eighth day and he, he, he fulfilled all of the laws, he had a revelation that was separate from what the people who spent time with Jesus had. He knew that beyond all of this, there is a dropping off, there is a shedding, there is a taking off of the old man and stepping into the new man. The old man is separated from God. The old man is separated from God. It doesn't mean that the old man doesn't come to church. It doesn't mean that the old man doesn't try or have a semblance of being with God. But the old man is separated from God. Not because of his actions. This is what we miss it a lot. It's not how, how much you go to church. The old man is separated from God. The old man is controlled by the prince of the air. Can't understand how some of us have lived our life so much and and this is a little you know chastisement or maybe I'm just drawing contrast, you know. Hey. It's I, I you know it's part of I'm talking to myself to preach to myself too, but I can't understand how we confess and profess Jesus so much, but we are so concerned about the things of the world. I mean, one of I don't wanna, I don't like naming names, but you know some some I mean I see believers who talk about musical icons as though they are Jesus. I'm like I don't even, I don't even think you worship Jesus like that. I mean, I don't, I don't think you worship Jesus yeah. like that. You hear it, you're all shaking and you're, you know, oh, calm down. <laughs> 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 well, I know you still got some vibes, some old man minding you, but shouldn't you be transforming? Should you not be transforming? The old man is ruled by the prince of the air. So you can still come to church and do everything, go through the motions, and actually still love God very much. And still genuinely love God and serve God. But when you leave, you are ruled by the prince of the air. You go in places and whatever they do, you just flow with it. And you, 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 cannot, you cannot seem to understand why you are 
Like, why, why am I here? Yeah. Why am I doing what I'm doing? Yeah. Yeah. Because you are still controlled by the prince of the air. That's what Ephesians says. Ephesians 2. The old man is in tune with the world. You are, you are on the same frequency with the world. Wow. You get their vibes. You understand what is, what is happening in the world. Wow. You know? There is a separation. There was a separation. There is a separation, Scripture says, between the old man and the new man. The man who is in the kingdom of yeah. God. And the old man is separated from messianic promises. Mm. From the promise of promises of Jesus and the promises of the kingdom of God. And I wonder if that's the reason why scripture says that in the last days Jesus will say to some people, get away from me because I know you not, you workers of iniquity. Yeah, yeah. And they will say, but I but I I, I, I prophesied in your name. I, I healed in your name. I had a semblance of of this thing. You know. You know, and the father will say, "Get away from me, for I know you not." I'm not going to go into deep theological teachings to whether to expound on whether or not salvation ends at you just accepting Jesus as the Lord and Savior, or it ends when you renew and become sanctified and regenerated. I, I'm going to leave that for later. But all I want to tell you is this: I need you to really, really be conscious about the renewal process. Yeah. That what, that's what makes you a new man. Yeah. Yeah. Salvation makes you a regenerated man. Renewal Come makes on. you a new God. man. God. Let's begin to grow up in Jesus. Yeah. Let's begin to look like our Father. Let's begin to be transformed into the image of our Father. The regenerated man is led by the Spirit. It is washed by the word of God. Yeah. It is washed by the word of God. The knowledge of him who created it. So what Pastor Paul is saying here is, it's not just reading the word of God. It is the knowledge of God. Some of us who are on the prayer line heard um, a majority two, two nights ago teaching about knowing God and knowing God. Yeah. Right? Because knowledge comes from a place of experience. Yeah. Right? The things you know about somebody that you know because you've had experience with them. Other people can tell you different and you can tell them, no. Nope. I know them. I know them. I was having a discussion with somebody the other day. And they said, that that somebody, he looks he looks like he's very, you know, lustful. All the time he's looking. And I said, I think that guy just gets carried away when he looks. Because he looks at everything like that. <laughs> It just looks like everything like that. And smiling and everything. <laughs> but you wouldn't know him. If you see him one time or twice looking at somebody and it happens to be a woman, you say he's lustful. Yeah. But somebody who has lived with him, you know that the guy just looks like that. <laughs> now, those are two different perspectives that come from two different experiences. And so you can know God in the one level and somebody else tell you, I know God. He's, he's, a, he's an unjust guy. He's very tough. You're like, no, I've not got all my life. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. It's just. Yeah. Yeah. It's loving. Yeah. You need to spend more time to know aspects of God. Yeah. Yeah. So I was Paul's not just talking about reading the scripture, saying you would come into the knowledge yeah. of God. Yeah. That is how you become regenerated. You become transformed by the knowledge of God, we are seated, we are raised up, and we are seated with Him in heavenly places. If you are raised up and you are seated with Him in heavenly places, what does that even mean to us? Because I don't understand how we can sit with God in heavenly places and be so mindful of carnal things. So connected with earthly things. So connected with things that are, based, that, that, you know, that are not the heart of God. So maybe we've left our seat in heavenly places. Ah. Maybe we have self-demoted ourselves ah. from sitting in heavenly places and coming to sit in the earthly room. 
and not just sitting in the earthly realm, sitting under the influence of the prince of the earth. Colossians 3.10 says that, and, and I have put, and I have put on you the new man, no, no, and I have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him who created him. 11 says, where there is neither, neither, neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, cinchin, bond, nor free, but Christ is all and in all. So, there, right there, is the place of invitation that the Father is calling us to. That is where the regenerated man and the renewed man sit in. We, right now, in the church, a lot of us are still sitting in a place of regeneration. We've not been renewed into the citizenship of the kingdom of God. Where there is neither Greek yeah. Not you. We still see all the differences. Yeah. We yeah. see all the differences in the expressions, yeah. Yeah. in our dress. Yeah. We see the differences in, yeah. in how we worship. Yeah. Yeah. We see the differences in all of that, which is which those differences exist yeah. and has nothing to do with your relationship with God. But we hold on to those things so strongly that we have not unified in faith. Come on. Come on. We have Come not on. matured into the unity of the faith wow. that is Come the heart on. of God. The renewed man goes beyond just being regenerated. Mm -hmm. Apostle Paul had to chastise Peter. Mm -hmm. Peter is, I mean, you know, it was upon which the church was established. But Peter still had some certain things about him that needed to be checked. Right. He still had some racial tendencies. Yeah. Yeah. You know? It would, appear, it would appear one way in front of the leaders of the church in Jerusalem. And then when he goes to when he goes to Colossians and Colossae or the other cities, you know, it kind of you know kind of flows with them. And then when they went to report him to James, I think James gave him James gave him some little, you know, sat, sat him down. And then Peter all of a sudden wouldn't even sit down to eat with the people that he had with. And these are the people who spent time with Jesus. They saw Jesus leave everything he was doing and fellowship with a Samaritan woman yeah. by the well. Yeah. They saw him first and break down barriers of race, racism and all of this. Mm -hmm. But because they had a culture of racism, mm -hmm. they had a culture of elitism. Yeah. Even though they knew the Father, yeah. they didn't have a full knowledge yeah. of the Father. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They still saw him from perspectives, from angles and, and conveniences and things that, that, that pleases them, kind of suits them. Yeah. And so the place of renewal that we're being called to is the place beyond just being regenerated. It's the place of coming into the full knowledge of God. That you know that there is neither Jew yeah. nor Gentile in God. Yeah. There is neither American yeah. nor Mexican yeah. in God. There is neither African nor Asian in God. There is neither Australian nor, nor Hindu in God. All the body have become one in the Father. It takes a renewing of your mindset to God. It takes a renewal of our minds to grab this. The regenerated man has a transformed value system. He is not just renewed to no longer see a difference or to no longer differentiate himself from the Jew if he was if it's a Gentile. It's no longer all of that, but beyond that, he has a different value system. In the book of Philippians 3, 7, Apostle Paul was talking about his previous value system compared to his new value system after he became renewed. It says that but for whatsoever former things were gains to me, the things that I used to pride in, the things that I used to hold so dearly to me, the things that I thought were the requirements for me to make ever, the things that I thought I was doing to please God, those things, after a renewal process, are now count for loss. After the encounter of renewal, I know that I've been wasting my time. And I'll gladly give in every of those in exchange. In exchange to be more like Jesus. 
It says, but for what things I what things were gained to me, these yeah. I have counted lost yeah. for Christ. Yeah. Apostle Paul used to be a, is a, is, was a zealot. Yeah. He was always in the first, <laughs> in the forefront of people trying to chastise and kill believers. Yeah. It was very good with the Lord. You know, studied, studied the Lord, studied, you know, the Torah, studied the, the scriptures. It was very passionate. And so there were all these things he was, he was doing, he was doing it because he thought it was pleasing God. He thought that he knew God. He thought that he was a transformed person, or rather that he was working to please God. But after he was regenerated, and after he became renewed, after he became renewed, Scripture says that he counted all those things for loss. It almost looks like to him, he felt like he's wasted all of his life before he had this experience. And some of us still take parts of our former life, parts of our unrenewed life, and we still kind of mix it with our work today. Kind of still mix it. You don't want to let go. It's at the core of your identity. You don't want to let go. Things that, you, things that you've done, you know, that you, you are so sure that, you know, this, this, you did this to please yeah. God yeah. because you spent 10 years, 15 years. Come on, come on, you know, it's still a part of you. You have to count all those things for loss. Yes. And you have to chase after the Father for a renewal process. Yeah. Yeah. For a renewal process. For some of us in the church, it is self righteousness. Yeah. Self righteousness exemplifies itself or kind of expresses itself differently in hope, right? Because they thought that they were the righteous ones. And the Christians were all blasphemous, right? And today we live in a time when we are self-righteous in the church. Everybody out there don't know nothing except we, right? Except us. You know, when people are talking about abortion, you know, we, we knock them down as though, you know, they, they are like forgotten sinners. We're self-righteous. And by the way, we don't, we're pro-life. We don't support abortion here, just so you know. But it's not our job to make people look as though they are damned yeah. forever. Yeah. Our job yeah. is to reconcile people yeah. back to Jesus. Yeah. Not to tolerate the act, yeah. but to reconcile people back to Jesus. Yeah. But the, 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 the church has lifted up itself wow. to a place of near judgment position. Yeah. Near judgment position. Jesus wow. was there when they were going to stone the, the woman caught in the act of adultery. Yeah. Okay. She was caught red-handed. Yeah. And they were going to stone her. This is how you know the heart of God. Yeah, yeah. We read through the scripture, but we don't see between the lines. Yeah. We don't see between the lines. The one that came to just pass judgment on her. Jesus neither condemned her, yeah. nor pacified her. Yeah. Because it was clear that what she is doing was wrong. I mean, even she knew that what she was doing was wrong. The people who committed abortion, most of them know that what they're doing is wrong. Yeah. They are broken. Some of them leave their life regretting it. Yeah. Yeah. Not people who regret it 20 years later and still regret that act. Yeah. It's an act from a place of brokenness. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're ministering to people like that, you need to come in love. Yeah. 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 You need to come in love. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus looked beyond the situation and looked past that and looked at her destiny. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. And asked everybody that you without sin cast the yeah. first stone. Yeah. And they all dissipated. Mm -hmm. And after they left, he asked her, does anyone still condemn you? Yeah. She said, no. Now that was a point where Jesus said, okay, now let's talk one on one. Yeah. Go and sin no more. Because she now had an experience of love. That experience of love and forgiveness and grace overshadows any amount of stoning that you can stone her. But that's not just in the... It, not just in the, in, in the, in the case of abortion. Yeah. In the case of our prison system. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, these are things that I'm still praying and wrestling through with, in my heart. I mean, you know, I wasn't born here, so I'm still walking through some things. You know, pardon me if I'm a little slow, you know. Yeah. But, <laughs> but I cannot understand how men, because of mistakes that they made, some of them also wrongfully convicted, yeah. would suffer the rest of their life. The rest of their life because of mistakes that they made. And we Christians are at the forefront 
champion in this. So it brings me the question, what is the old work of repentance? You must think that you are more holy than the person who was caught red-handed in the sin. Or the person who acted on their, on their, on their, on their temptations. And this is in no way excusing anybody with the wrong thing. I think that they should rightfully, you know, you know, go through the legal process. But there should be redemption in the process. The whole process should be structured for redemption. Give him an opportunity to come back and fight for work, for a job. Give him an opportunity to come back and be active in the society, to come and vote. And be part of constructive members of society. If I know I come out and I don't have an opportunity to vote, I know I come out and I can't really get a job because my background is flying. What incentive do I have to really be restituted? What, in, what incentive do I have to, to turn around? Really? What incentive do I have? What do I look forward to? And we all talk about the hope of his glory. We all talk about the hope of his calling. We all talk about the hope. I take it off from the people who need it the most. We are the church. We are the church. Yeah. You want to transform the world? These are things that you need to think about. Right. These are things that you need to wrestle with God about. Yeah. Yeah. The people who have made one mistake in their life and God totally turned them around. Paul, if you leave yeah. into this world, will be incarcerated yeah. for life. Yeah. Yeah. For life. Because he kid was one of the people who, who, who killed um, Philip. Mm -hmm. It was Stephen. Yeah. Yeah. It was always there when they were killing or chastising somebody. He had a reputation that preceded him. Matter of fact, even after his conversion and came to Jerusalem, the Christians were like, no. No. We know that guy. We don't trust him. This could be a ploy, you know. But it was so useful in the hand of God. That lives and destinies and generations unborn past has been transformed by the revelation that Paul had with the Father. Yeah. They transform it, this transformation and the renewal that he had with the Father. Yeah. So I'm calling us to a place for the new thing, for the renewal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When we're thinking of the renewal, we're not thinking it for just ourselves. Yeah. We're not just thinking about the renewal for just a new job and a new name and a, and a new fame and a new thing. No, you want everything around you to become new. Yeah. That is, the, that is the option that you have on your life. If you are becoming new and all things around you are not new, you need to ask yourself a question. You need to birth new things. People need to come into your sphere of influence and become new. The renewal process is not just for yourself. It's for you to be so transformed that you come into places where people will be reading up. And then you show them a, 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 a glimpse of redemption. You show them just, just an aspect of God in redemption. And that is enough motivation for them to turn their lives around. That is the world that we're called to transform. For some of us, it's not self-righteousness. The things that we have garnered we, in, our, in, in our previous experience, you know, sometimes even right now we work in corporate America and we, we also work in the church. Sometimes my wife shares certain things with me and I just, I leave my mouth open for two seconds. <laughs> it's a good thing we don't have a lot of flies around, but <laughs> I'm like, really? <laughs> Literally people networking in the church. I mean, what are you networking for? For positions to speak. What abomination in the church. The things that we have gathered, the experiences that we have gathered in the world. The things that we used to be so good at in the world. After we became renewed. After we became renewed, we can't drop it off. We still, have, we still bring it into Christ. We bring it into Christ. The scripture says that the greatest of you will be the least. The person who serves. And so instead of spending time trying to network, yeah. look for opportunities to serve. Amen. That's scripture. Amen. That's scripture. When, when that temptation comes to your mind, what can I do to be seen? Mm -hmm. Look for opportunities yeah. to call. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 
Amen. Join me as we get up in um. I just want to invite us to a place of renewal. I want to invite us to a place of renewal. This is a renewal place. It's a place that is imaginary. It's a place that is different for each and every one of us. It's a, it's a place that you transform from not just regenerated. I think, by the way, let me just give everybody an opportunity. If you were in this place and you've not experienced regeneration, you've not had an experience, a personal experience with Jesus, you have not confessed Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are not saved, the Spirit of the Lord does not bear witness with your spirit that you are saved. If you would please raise your hands and let us have that we quickly, quickly go through this wonderful time of regeneration with you. And all hands with you and walk you through this journey of regeneration and becoming a new man. And many of us here want to take that opportunity and become a new man today. You have not experienced salvation. This is the first time you want to walk into salvation and, and you, want to, you want to honor God with this. You want to honor God with your life. Just want to invite you to raise up your hands and, and we'll walk through this with you. Amen. Amen. So all of us are saved, which is a beautiful thing. But we need to keep being transformed. All of us are not renewed. I am not fully renewed. I don't look like Jesus yet. <laughs> if you if you touch me my wrong button, if you walk me the wrong way, I can still hurt you. I am not fully transformed. And I know that. <laughs> I know that. But I am daily walking through that. I am daily having my eyes. I have my eyes on the glory of the Father and I am daily being transformed from glory to glory and my heart's desire is to be renewed so much that I look like my Father and I sound like my Father I want to invite you all to this place of renewal you open up your heart and say Father everything that I have that I still hold on to every part of the old man garments that I have not shared things that I have refused to let go Things that have become a part of my identity that I've hold on to. That does that is not the new man. That you, that you will help me shed it off. That you will let me shed it off. Focus your eyes on the Father and say, Father, I want my eyes to be fixed upon you. I keep my eyes fixed upon you. My eyes are fixed on the knowledge of the Father, the one who has called me to his image. And you begin to pray for a transformation of not just not just your outward man, not just your outward man, but of your inner man. Of your inner man. Let that begin to speak for right now. New man in us, new man in us. New man in us, new man in us, Jesus. Lord, and hunger and thirst after the new man, after your righteousness, God. After your righteousness, that we will become new because we are transformed from inside out. From inside out. From inside out, let everything around us begin to bubble forth with life. Let everything around us begin to spring forth with life. Lord, we wrestle, God. We wrestle, Lord. Lord, we wrestle with this whole idea, Lord Jesus. That because we are saved, it is enough. This idea of self-righteousness. And then we take our eyes away from the mirror. We don't look at it intently enough. We don't look at it long enough to see the reasons for growth. And rather we see reasons for condemnation. For looking at other people and passing judgments, God. The Lord, you will give us a repentant heart, God. May you give us a contrite heart, God. That our eyes will be fixed upon you, Jesus. We want you to be the delight of our heart, God. We want you to be the heartbeat, God, of our hearts, God. We want our hearts, Lord, to be sick with you, God. We want our delight to be you and yours, God. We want to be more like you, Jesus. We want a new thing to happen in ourselves, in our heart, in our innermost being, Jesus. Let the let, let legacy of the church begin to rebirth. Rebirth spiritually, God. Let there be spiritual rebirth in this place in the name of Jesus. Let there be spiritual rebirth in the name of Jesus' name. Let there be transformation. Renewal. Renewal, 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 renewal. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. 
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
Brother Sean is always dressed so fresh, especially when we have our little event. So that's amazing. We've also we had 16 new members in August. So uh, Pastor Pastor Tomika, right? We're getting ready to have a um, a new members gathering. So before for the new you guys can go if you'd like. For the new members, we would do something like in the evening or on a Friday, but we're going to start having a, a leader's lunch where the new members that have just joined are going to meet with the leaders, the elders, and um, the, uh, uh, us, the senior leaders. We're going to feed you. We're going to get to know you on a Sunday afternoon. So we're going to be sharing that flyer soon. That way I can begin to know people's names. So I'm like, you've been with us. What is your name again? So welcome, welcome, welcome. Wednesday, Bible study. Friday night, the women, we are gathering together. Saturday is inner healing and deliverance. Um, make sure you sign up for the Soul Purge. We love you. We're so thankful. Have a blessed Sunday. Your guests would love to